Good morning. It is good to be with you all this Sunday morning. I also have to say one of my favorite things about Joy is that we all congregate in the fellowship, like the Narthex area for so long first before coming in. It just feels like a very close-knit, loving community. And if that's ever why we're late, I'm okay with it. I love it. Um, it's so good to be with you all today. Um, this weekend was Synod Assembly. So all of the church, all 192 churches, uh, the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin, our little corner up here, gathered together um, to vote on some important matters in our synod. Um, Carmen Burley and Helen Stokel came with me, and it was a wonderful weekend of getting to know different people in our congregations, sharing ideas and stories, and getting to be together and ministry together and remind ourselves that our church is so important and connected to so many other churches in the area. We also had a very special election for bishop, and we elected uh, <laughs> Reverend Martin Hallam to be our bishop for the coming year, for the coming six years. He'll start in September, and we'll make sure we release more information about him and when his installation date is and everything, and more information about what we all voted on at Synod Assembly, because it's good for you all to know, too. But it was a beautiful weekend. Um, we'll have a new bishop joining us soon. Um, Marsha and Marv are also there, so you can ask them about it too, or me and Carmen after worship, more about the Synod Assembly. But before we begin worship, we always like to take a moment of silence to center ourselves in prayer. And it's going to take a second for our screen to come back on, and that's okay. So our call to worship, I will read to you all, and it is based on Psalm 138 that you'll hear later in worship. In times of trouble, when all seemed helpless, I cried out to God, and the Lord heard my pleas and answered me. When I felt lost and alone, I looked for God, and God found me and brought me home. When my life was filled with joy and blessing, I danced and I praised God, and God danced and rejoiced with me. Thanks be to God. Amen. So you remember those nice red hymnals that are in your chairs? Well, we're going to use them today while he gets the PowerPoint back up. It'll take a second. <coughs> Our first song is All, is All Are Welcome, which is 641. 641 in your red hymnals. And you can stand as you are comfortable. Let us build a house where love can dwell and Build a house where love is found. 
much. Please be seated and join me in the prayer of the day that is on our screen. Mighty God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in you that we may triumph for all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we have our children's sermon, so I invite any of our littlest Lutherans to come on forward who like to today. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. There's so many of you. How are y'all doing today? Good. Thumbs up? All right. I have a question for you. So imagine you're playing at the playground, and there's more kids coming and coming and coming. How does it feel when there are more kids and more games? You had some What? You got a lot of kids at the playground? How does it feel when you see more and more of your friends show up at the playground? Yeah. Yeah, you can play animals, so there's more games you can play, the more people that come, right? It can be exciting to see more and more friends come and fill the space. But what happens? when there's a lot of people there and then someone comes and they're being mean to everybody and they're yelling and they might be kicking dirt in people's faces and they're not being nice at the playground. How does that make you feel? Sad. Sad, right? And angry. Does that kind of ruin the fun for everybody? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You should, you treat evil with good, so you should ignore them, play by yourselves, do your own thing. That makes sense, right? And play with the people that are being nice and friendly. And maybe you can try to talk to the kid that's being not so nice or tell your adults too. But otherwise, we want to make sure everyone has a fun and safe place to play and learn and grow, right? So in our Bible story today, Jesus is hanging out with a lot of people, and it's so many people, he can't even move his arms, right? He's, there's so many people in the house, they're all tight and crammed in there, and it's so exciting. But there's some people outside that say, Jesus, you shouldn't be welcoming all these people. Jesus, you're doing bad things, being loving and kind to these people. Jesus, you shouldn't be doing this, and they want to stop him. And so what does Jesus do? He makes a really hard decision, and he says, these people that are inside, and they're being nice and kind and loving, they are my family, and they belong. If you can't be nice and kind, it's okay to not come in right now. So Jesus makes a really hard decision to say, 
we're going to take care of the ones that are being nice and kind and working together, and we'll talk to the ones that aren't being nice and kind a little bit later. So it's a really hard decision, but Jesus says, guess what? The house is so full of people, so full. There's space for everyone in the house. There's space for everyone to learn and grow and play. And Jesus says, when you're ready to come back, you are welcomed back, and you are going to be so loved and celebrated here. But sometimes we got to make sure we look out for everybody, right? we got to look out for our friends, make sure they're not getting bullied or hurt or anything. But God, yeah, then you can stand up and talk to an adult and make sure you look out for all your friends, right? So that's what the gospel story is about today, that we look out for all of our people, we take care of them, and we protect them, just like God loves and protects and watches over us. Sound good? Two thumbs up? Good. Will you say a prayer with me? Showing good prayer hands. And we do call and response, and congregation can join us. Dear God, thank you for loving us and giving us a place to belong. Help us make all places beautiful and safe. Help us make all places beautiful and safe. Amen. Thank you for being here today. You can go on back to your seats. And congregation will continue with our next hymn, and you can remain seated. and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us prayerfully confess our sin. We'll take a moment of prayerful reflection. God, our provider, Help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy 
you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. And we continue with our readings. Today's reading is from Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is from Mark, the third chapter. Jesus went home And the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people are saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub. And by the ruler of demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if the house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan rises up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will, forgive for the, will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty in eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and they were standing outside, and they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside. They are asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, if you're looking for a Jesus that is friendly and not divisive and just comfortable and cozy, well, maybe this gospel story isn't really for you. It's uncomfortable, this gospel story we just heard. And it doesn't align with what we picture of Jesus who has family values to be like because he is literally dividing people. But it is in dividing people that Jesus is rebuilding something beautiful. Jesus is really early in his ministry. We're only in the third third chapter of Mark. And he's already starting to gain notoriety around town, both in really good ways and in not so good ways. Jesus has already been baptized and journeyed out to the wilderness. He has has healed a paralyzed man. He has started calling some of his disciples, and he has been casting out demons 
from those who have been struck with demons. He is certainly doing God's work, and he is acting as the Messiah that he is. And this draws people to him, of course, people who are hungry, people who are hungry for healing, hungry for words of hope, hungry for miracles that they've been dying to have. They're hungry for the presence of God and the renewal of their faith. And this draws in so many people, in fact, that the Jesus and his disciples can't even move their arms to eat. Think of the crowds that the Beatles used to draw, or if for modern day, filling stadiums with Taylor Swift fans. That's the kind of people that are being drawn to Jesus, that crowd that wants to see everything. So this is celebrity level attention that Jesus is getting, and it is good that Jesus is able to teach and heal and care for so many people all at once but it is also scaring people, especially his family, when it says they want to restrain him. They think he is crazy. They don't know who this Jesus is. They don't recognize him anymore. Jesus was trained to be a carpenter, and he's a loving brother and son, and now he's casting out demons? This just doesn't match up for his family, so they come to get him and restrain him. And the scribes and the other religious authorities come with the family and want to do the same. They want to tamper down his power and influence in the community. But when his family calls for him, he doesn't go. He looks at this crowded room of people surrounding him, people who hunger to belong somewhere to someone people who hunger for hope and healing, to have someone know them fully and love them as they are, someone to call them beloved, and he looks at them, and he loves them. And he thinks of his family outside, the ones who loved him and raised him and taught him everything he knows, but the ones who are now uncomfortable with who Jesus is becoming the ones wanting to restrain him and stop the work of God happening right here in front of them. So Jesus has to make a choice. And it's a difficult and a painful choice. And maybe with sorrow in his heart and a lump in his throat, he chooses the people that are sitting around him. Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my mother and my brothers and my sisters. According to the Gospel of Mark, Jesus goes no contact with his family, and throughout the rest of the Gospel, we never hear from his mother or his siblings again, at least in the Gospel of Mark, um, which is what we're going to focus on today. And Jesus divides people, and this is hard. But as author and preacher Debbie Thomas explains, he doesn't divide to make us homeless. He divides to rebuild to make home more spacious, more welcoming, more beautiful. The fact that his work of rupture and restoration cost him in tangible ways, deeply family and communal ways, only makes it more precious for all of us who yearn to come home. Jesus is making a new home for the ones who are longing for one. And Jesus builds a place for people to belong, and in this painful but necessary dividing, he is rebuilding. In 2009, as some of you might know or remember, the ELCA faced a major division that is still impacting churches and peoples today. There's a church-wide assembly of the ELCA, so there are representatives from all over the country go to Chicago, and they make decisions for the whole denomination. And they came together to talk about a resolution on human sexuality. The resolution, in summary, you can find it in detail online, is, was to allow people, especially LGBTQIA plus people, to be called as ordained pastors and deacons in the ELCA. Prior to this 2009 vote, pastors were required to be closeted, meaning they couldn't talk about being LGBTQIA plus. 
they will also be defrocked for being out, meaning they will lose all of their rights of being a pastor if they outed themselves. There's also this small rebellious sect of people that were ordaining LGBTQIA plus people extraordinarily, but this wasn't being openly celebrated in the larger ELCA body. So this was already starting to divide people in these different sects. So the ELCA decided to come to a vote and come to a consensus about whether or not to call and ordain LGBTQIA plus people. The resolution needed a two-thirds vote to pass, and it passed by one vote. Just one vote. And everyone in attendance was shocked, and the room was silent. This moment, unfortunately, divided the church even more, and it still is a painful division in the church. Some congregations left the ELCA entirely and don't associate with the ELCA. Some stayed within the ELCA, but they kind of make their own rules and they aren't accepting of LGBTQIA plus people even still today. But others, like Joy Lutheran Church, the church you're in today, embraced this idea of a wider welcome and wrote stunning welcome statements, updated their constitutions, held LGBTQIA plus weddings in their church for the first time, and called and ordained many, many talented, wonderful, beautiful LGBTQIA plus pastors and deacons. Now, this isn't without some pain, though. We lost many congregations, we lost members, and we lost ministries due to this decision, and many places still feel this hurt and this grief as if it was yesterday. But in this dividing, we rebuilt something amazing within the ELCA. I am incredibly proud to be an openly LGBTQIA plus pastor. Um, I use the word queer or gay to describe myself. And I'm especially incredibly, incredibly proud, prouder than words can express, to be called here to Joy Lutheran Church. Your welcome statement, which you'll find on our website and in our bulletins, it reads as such. With open hearts, open minds, and open doors, we extend a sincere, extravagant welcome to everyone to be a part of our church family at Joy. Understanding that all persons are created, loved, and accepted by God, we embrace all ages, races, cultures, sexual orientations, gender identities, family structures, life situations, economic circumstances, physical, cognitive, and emotional abilities, educational, spiritual, and religious backgrounds. It's a long welcome statement, but it's a wide net that catches so many amazing people like yourselves here today. I read this statement while I was interviewing with your call committee, and I just started crying because I knew I would be safe and loved here, and you have proven that every single day since I started. You all build longer tables and open your door wide enough to love everyone extravagantly. And we continue to learn how to make joy a welcoming and loving place to live where we stand up for what we believe and we also name what we stand against. While this kind of welcome might still make others uncomfortable and it might mean saying no to people who don't support us, we embrace this wider welcome because that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did every day of his ministry. He divided, he made room at the table for everyone to fit. He invited people into relationship and knowing him and knowing the community and taught everybody about how the spirit was moving through him and the world. He welcomed all people and strived to make the community safe for everyone. Even when it meant turning people away who might do harm to the people he loved, but not without teaching them a little bit first, like the parable we heard in Mark. Jesus divided people not to harm them, not to exclude them, not to say you will never be loved or forgiven, but to say, when you're ready, come and find me again. And to say, I love and protect and rebuild a place where all people can belong, a beautiful, inclusive, 
crowded space. Beloved children of God, all of you belong here. Belong here at joy, and you belong here with God. You are loved more than you could ever imagine. You matter exactly as you are, and everything about you, everything that makes you unique, is celebrated here at joy, and most certainly celebrated by God. This communion table, even though it looks finite, it is long, and it extends to all of our people who just hold out their hand to receive Jesus. God loves you and welcomes you, and there is a place set at the table for you. And God welcomes you just as we welcome you, just as you are. Amen. You can stand as you are comfortable for our next song. Shepherd, lead us, much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us, for our use your fold repair. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus. Together by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into the heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, for ourselves, and for our world. Dear God, you reawaken our hearts to your mercy. We give you thanks for renewers of the church in every age. Enliven the creativity and the persistence of all seeking to transform the church into a closer vision of your beloved community. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your presence is revealed in the shade of the trees, the growth of seeds into flowers, and in the blessing of plants granting food in their right season. Heal land scarred by deforestation, pollution, and infestation. Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Our nations and our communities are divided, O oh God. Teach us again to listen with curiosity and mercy, even in disagreement. Grant us the humility to acknowledge our hardness of heart and make us bold in modeling cooperation for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Hear the prayers of all who cry out from the depths of fear, despair, or hopelessness, especially those we name aloud in this space or silently in our hearts. With haste, O oh God, rescue victims of trafficking, exploitation, and abuse, and bless, organiza bless organizations and individuals who work on their behalf. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom and clarity to all who are in seasons of discernment and transition, high school graduates preparing for first jobs or new educational journeys, those who are shifting careers, and those who are navigating changes in their relationships. Accompany them with your peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Praise to you for our ancestors in faith who believed, spoke, and lived in you. Give us confidence that as Jesus was raised, so we too will be raised with all of the saints into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Together we say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Why, thank you so much. Please share a sign of peace with those that are around you. As we mosey on back to our seats um, and per prepare to receive our offering, remember this is your time to text in church. Send a little extra peace or love or kindness to someone who might need it. Maybe an invitation to join them at church next week. There are plenty of seats open. There's space for everyone. But feel free to send a text of love to someone who needs it. Let us pray over our offering. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Jesus gathered people as he often did, nice and tight and crowded over a table, and we gather again over that same table and the same meal for generations and generations to come. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set this long table with more than enough food for all. All are welcome. I'll take communion servers first. Now that we all have been fed, receive this blessing. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, before we go on our way, we have a couple of announcements. Firstly is a bittersweet one that you might have heard last week. Um, but our wonderful pianists, Joan Schock and Karen Lundgaard, are officially retiring at the end of August. They've been serving with us for many, many, many years. And we love to give them a round of applause as thank you. <laughs> <laughs> their last official sunday will be august 26th um, there'll be a lot of very beautiful special music they said they didn't want a party but we're having a party um so come on august 26th um well at least we can party they can be there if they want but uh, we really give you thanks for all of your many many years of service and gifts of music we really appreciate it um, that also means on the business side, we have released a job description um, for pianists. It can be shared between two people, like it has been uh, one person, but it is on our website, it's on our Facebook. If you know anybody who might be interested, feel free to send it on, on to them. If you have any questions about it, um, let me or David in the office know uh, if you have any questions and we'll get back to you. Um, but sincere thank you for both of you. A couple of other announcements. Our women's Bible study will be this Wednesday, June 12th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we've been talking a lot about some women who went through some wars and some trauma, so we're going to do a lighter one, hopefully, and do Proverbs 31, um, which is like the how to be a dutiful wife um, kind of proverb, right? See, I see you some making some faces. We're going to talk about it. What does it mean? What is this about? How does this relate to us? Does it relate to us? So many good questions um, and conversation will happen around that. So that'll be this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Um, bring your Bibles, but if you don't have one, we have extras. Um, but it'll be a really good um, conversation about what it means to be a woman and what Scripture says about being a woman, too. Um, we are looking for help with ushers. Um, our June calendar is looking a little light. Um, so if you would like to help usher, um, please sign up in the back. Jim knows what to do. Other folks know what to do. Feel free to ask them questions about how to do it um, as well. But anyone of all ages can help with ushering. We would love to have you. Um, of course, give Thriving gift cards. Um, we really appreciate that. I forgot to say to, um, Monday the 17th, so not this coming Monday, but the next Monday, is Joyful Seniors starting at 10 a.m., which will be wonderful. And last but not least, Luke Hillman um, will give a presentation about his ministry with Crew. Um, well, welcome, Luke. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate it. Um, good morning, Joy. My name is Luke Hillman. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Um, I was confirmed with Joy years ago now. Um, I graduated from Prescott in 2020, and I left to go to UMD to pursue civil engineering. And I have to confess at that time, um, 
my relationship with God just wasn't something I was thinking much about. Um, I would say Christ was a part of my life, but he wasn't the foundation of my life. He wasn't everything that I was centering my life around. I would bring him along with me wherever it was convenient, but um, I wasn't basing my decisions and the way I was interacting with others around my relationship with Christ. Moreover, I had serious doubts about my faith going into college. Um, and I mean, this is just my experience, but I think generally speaking that this sort of experience going into college is a lot more familiar than we realize. Um, there was one poll from the Barnes group, or Barna group, excuse me, um, that found that 70% of high school students who enter college end up leaving college with little to no faith. That's 70%. And I think what made the difference for me was getting connected with this ministry crew. Um, before getting connected with crew, I think the foundations of my life were my own happiness, my own reputation. But I, I think of Jeremiah 20, 23, 29. Um, it says, is my word not like a fire and like a hammer which breaks the rocks? So whereas I was trying to build the house of my life upon all these wrong things, all these good things, but they were, they were wrong. They were the wrong things to build my life on. I was trying to build my life on these and God says, I'm here to burn the house down and break the foundation. <laughs> you need to start over. It, it's gotta be new. Um, and I think that's what Christ has for all of us. Um, and my point with all of this is just to say, I think that crew played a really significant role in helping right the ship in that way, in setting my feet on the proper foundation, the foundation of Christ and his forgiveness and his love for all of us. Um, I think being with crew, I just was really challenged to pursue a deeper relationship with Christ. Um, I had people walking alongside me as I struggled with theological things that I had differences with them about. Um, just to, and they were also the, just there to, there for me to help me think through personal emotional things that were happening. And just experiencing this incredible community um, has really challenged me to think about pursuing this full time for the year ahead. Um, which is the following that I'm choosing, uh, that I'm feeling called to, the calling that I'm choosing to follow, rather. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's a big step of faith, and I've appreciated your guys' support along the way. One of the steps of faith I took last year was going on a mission to the, the Middle East over spring break, which was a mission that you guys helped support. Um, and I'm asking for your support once again as I uh, embark on this new adventure. Uh, do mission, missions work full-time with crew at UMD next year. So if you'd be interested in hearing more about that, um, I'll be in the narthex in the back after this. Um, I'd love to get in touch with you if you just want to exchange contact information. We can set up a meeting, just talk more about what's actually happening, happening in the ministry, talk about what our ministry stands for, what our mission is um, on campus. We just want to win, build, and send college students to go and share the gospel with everyone. So please, if you'd like to consider supporting me financially or through prayer, um, please just talk to me in the back after this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luke. We're glad you're here um, back home again, and thank you for your ministry. Um, campus ministry growing up was really, in college was really, really important to me as well, and that's a big reason why I became a pastor. So ministries like this, are very important. So I hope you all prayerfully support him, financially support him, whatever works best for you all. But before we go on our way, I will send you with a blessing. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you are comfortable for our final song. <laughs> Him 671 in yeah. the red book, 671. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Love is 
shining in the midst of their darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine So our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirror here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Place, spirit, place. shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word. shining in the midst of their darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on 